Hi, I'm Catherine from Oxford, and today we want to do accelerometers for activity recognition at that end. Yes is our answer. And um, today I'm going to convince you that um, accelerometers is a dead end, and instead we should use imagers or image sensor for human activity recognition. So, okay, first of all, let's do a quick recap of how we've got here. So in the last 20 years, um, there have been a lot of uh, progress in this area, and it basically started back in the early 2000s when we adopted um, accelerometer for activity recognition based on several historic reasons. So some of these reasons relate to the cause, um, the fact that it's a cheap, uh, low energy requirement sensor, and also it's widely available back, back then. And like these were how phones looked like back then, and there was just simply no other alternative that would um, replace it as a, um, as a low energy requirement sensor that's available also for activity recognition. So um, in the next decade, we definitely see a lot of um, research energy poured in to back up the sensor as a default for HAR. Um, we see that a lot of the HAR papers in different conferences, such as Ubicom, are basically based on accelerometer data. And more importantly, um, outside of academia, we also see that um, everyday devices have accelerometer embedded in it. And in effect, accelerometers have become the default hard sensor. So um, and in addition to this, we also see better and better algorithms be developed. Um, but we want to ask this, ask this question, are we actually getting co closer to the goal of HAR? And OK, so, so we believe that the goal of HAR is to recognize activities, which are of a diverse range, and also to recognize them robustly. So not just activities like running, sitting, walking, but actual activities performed every day in our lives. Um, can we really expect to recognize all these diverse range of activities with a low dimensional sensor such as a accelerometer, which only captures motion-based features? Um, so we don't think so. Okay, so the other way to look at this problem is also that HAR is actually a two-part problem formed of the model as well as the data. Um, over the last couple of years, we have poured a lot of energy into building better and better models and algorithms. But aren't we also supposed to rethink this problem and rethink whether this data choice is um, correct or not? Um, so we believe that as a lawmaker and other inertial sensors by extension are a dead end for human activity recognition. And right now I'm going to show you like three key observations to justify this claim. Um, okay, so firstly, we observe that the accuracy isn't actually improving by a lot. Um, so here is the classic opportunity data set, and here is a plot of the yearly progress of the state-of-the-art models in the gesture recognition task. Um, so the orange and the green parts are the ones um, done by deep learning model. And we actually see that there, there hasn't been a huge jump even with the introduction of deep learning methods. And this is keeping in mind that deep learning is a model or is a type of algorithm that has revolutionized many other fields. Um, so this progress is a little bit underwhelming. Okay, so secondly, um, when we delve deeper into these um, the performance of these models, we realize that these models are also producing alarming confusions as well. Even with um, very powerful models, there are like very dumb mistakes made by these models, such as um, confusing opening a dishwasher with drinking from a cup. And these dumb mistakes have happened um, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and they're still present now. And um, it's, it's just like we believe that the cause is that um, as our lawmaker itself just do not provide enough information for us to distinguish or disambiguate these very diverse and different activities that we perform. Okay, and then thirdly, when we're looking at what we're trying to classify over the years, and this is a side-by-side -side comparison of what's present, uh, what we were trying to recognize 
20 years ago, uh, to, in 2004. And what we are currently still trying to recognize in the PAMAT data set eight years later. Um, so out of these 13 of which are the same activities and they're like basically walking, sitting, et cetera, that we, we are commonly um, known to be recognizing. And it seems as if we have restri restricted ourselves to only predicting activities that um, we expect a accelerometer can reasonably predict rather than um, really trying to push forward and recognize other activities that are uh, present in our everyday lives. And yeah, so like, is there any hope of recognizing these activities with an accelerometer? Um, so, okay, so we think that because of these reasons, accelerometer for hire is a dead end. And now you might ask, okay, what's the alternative? Um, okay, so I believe that um, the answer is actually staring right at our face. Um, like if we have to name one modality that we can say we have reasonably mastered over the last few decades, it would be images. And imagers or image sensor um, really have a lot more information than accelerometer. And we believe it should be a candidate for the default sensor for hire. And let me just illustrate this further. So I believe nobody in the room can reasonably like disambiguate these two activities performed here um, as captured by an accelerometer. But if we show you these images, it's clear what the person was doing, right? Um, so the person was either typing on the phone or typing on the computer. And um, these are fine grained details that we can extract from looking at the images. And so, so we did this experiment in five minutes, but basically you can recognize that this is a general phenomenon. If we want to predict more activities, um, not just for, like for other applications as well, like for example, in today's keynote talk, different health applications, um, like whether we want to ask the question of like, how people are interacting socially or how much time they spend in screens or like how they're interacting or the context of their interaction. These are all questions that we can answer if we have the image modality as well. Um, okay, so, but more importantly, now is the time to consider the switch to imagers. And this is for due to three reasons. First of all, it's due to the significant progress in computer vision. Um, as you may know, there are now a plethora of tasks that can be accomplished with um, computer vision that we can reasonably ex uh, extract very useful information from looking at image data. Um, like to name a few, there are object recognition, face uh, recognition as well as different scene understanding tasks that can be uh, done. And there's also the ImageNet data set which tries to classify like over um, like uh, a thousand objects. And this is a year to year performance of the ImageNet. And you can see it is in stark comparison to the, um, to the one that's performed on the opportunity data set in HAR. And second of all is the progress in hardware. So um, this is really timely because um, just late last year, this imager was um, announced as the world's smallest image sensor. And so it's like just less than uh, about half a millimeter in size. And these are like tremendous progress in hardware to make imagers um, smaller and smaller and having uh, for a much lower energy requirement as well. So um, right now we can also get a lot of off-the-shelf images um, just from the internet with ease as well. Um, okay, so but more importantly, we think that this is really the key ingredient to why we should adopt imagers now is the progress and on device processing. So um, in the recent years, we have seen some progress in um, compressing deep learning models and making complex models run on restrained, constrained platforms, such as the emergence of mobile net, squeeze net, et cetera. And this really ties into the question of privacy that people might have. Um, so if we can squeeze all of these processing and the entire activity recognition pipeline onto the device, then we can 
like achieve the uh, achieve a system that would have images never leaving the device, and we can accomplish the activity recognition pipeline on the device. And so this this um, the progress in this field really means that this whole pipeline based on imager is nothing that's inconceivable. And more importantly, we also think that ultimately with this in line, we can tell the customer that they can no longer um, view the image sensor as a camera in the conventional sense, but more as a, just another activity recognition sensor on their phone or like on their wearable devices. Okay, so. So right now, I've um, like laid out the different arguments for why we think accelerometers is a dead end for HAR, and also why we should adopt imagers now, um, in particular, focusing on the point that on-device processing really enables the fact that we can now do all of these on the device and ensure privacy. Um, but the question is really, is this practical? Is this feasible? So, Okay, so we did some calculations. And this is actually a, um, a image sensor that you can order, off the, uh, order online right now for under $10. And, and so, so we tried to make some assumption based on off-the-shelf products and off-the-shelf models to estimate the runtime. And um, having assumed different uh, reasonable assumption of the power consumption and also the battery capacity, we arrive at the runtime of 13 hours. So, so this is really um, nothing inconceivable. And um, if we can like, conceive to do this now, then uh, this is really a, a, a starting point for, our, for the research community to look into. And um, okay, so we also have some thoughts about different form factors that will make this useful. Um, the commonly known form factor is probably the form of uh, eyeglasses. Um, but we also had some ideas about like how you can incorporate and embed these image sensors, for example, in multiple angles on a smartwatch-like interface. And so this is one of our design as well. So the idea is to make all of these like socially acceptable so that people will not be opposed to this as well. Okay, so I think, um, so basically, um, at this point of the talk, um, some of you might just not be convinced at all, and then some of you might think there are some truth in my arguments. And I think we've arrived at this junction where like, you can go home and just continue doing your activity recognition research with uh, accelerometer data, or you can choose to believe me and think that like, maybe we should do <laughs> imager-based activity recognition from now on. Um, okay, so basically, if you do believe me, we can talk about what would the road ahead look like. So, so, so using imagers for activity recognition is not without its challenges. And these are a number of challenges that we can foresee so far. Um, so for, for instance, there are modeling concerns. Um, we can start with using current models for, in computer vision, but we also need to think about how to incorporate these for um, a data stream that is sparse, low uh, resolution, as well as multi-view. Um, there are concerns about system designs, how we can uh, run multiple models, for example, and also how we can tackle the problem of uh, privacy. And, Maybe that will be new uh, imagers tailored made for HAR. Or we can also leverage um, improvements in hardware design, such as improvements in MCU and MPUs that are optimized for running deep learning algorithms on device. And finally, um, a lot of these efforts depend on um, like the community getting together, really developing a data set for everybody so that they have a benchmark to uh, leverage on. So having a curated data set for this problem is also important. Um, but we believe that if the community really jumps uh, into the imager research, um, just as it did for accelerometer research, 
in five year time, in, in five years time, maybe we'll, we can really see a re like a significant distance in like the progress of activity recognition research. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, and I welcome any questions. <laughs>